It's one of many stories that come from the Aboriginal Australian people. You're allowed to hear this story, but not supposed to tell it unless you've received permission from an Aboriginal elder or Aboriginal council, which I'm lucky enough to have received. That's important that you know that. So here we go. The oldest story in the world, in a nutshell. The story itself is said to be at least 50,000 years old. There's reasons for believing it's a lot older than that. But even 50,000 years ago, when these people gathered together to share this story in the deserts of Australia, the first thing they would have said is a long time ago. For this story begins before the stars are in the sky. This story begins before the first tree ever grew, before the first of the birds ever flew. This story begins before the first of the fish ever swam, before the first of the dingoes ever ran, in the very beginning of all things. You might say before time, but the Aboriginal people of Australia do not believe in time. Time is a man-made thing, tick-tock to turn people into slaves. Change is what is real. Change marks all things in human life and the natural world. This story begins before the first change came. And before change began, that everything was as it always had been. The oldest story in the world does say, before the stars, before the moons, before the mountains or the valleys were made, the whole of the universe, everything was a vast emptiness. But within that emptiness, there was one round red ball, the earth. The oldest story in the world does say the earth was always here, but it didn't look like the earth we know today. There were no oceans, no forests, Everything was red sand, as red as blood and drier than old bone. For this sand had never been touched by water. There were no ripples upon the sand or valleys or hills. The sand followed the curvature of the earth. Perfect symmetry. And underneath that blood red sand were all the dreamers, the ancestors who created our world. The first of all the trees and the first of all the dingo dogs, the first of all the barracuda fish, the first of the koala, the first of the kookaburra, the first of the wind and the first of the stars. All things, their first ancestors, were below that dry sand, dreaming of what they would be when they awoke. And the first of all the dreamers to awaken was a vast serpent the rainbow serpent, so called because it was covered in scales and every single one of these serpent scales was a different colour to every other scale. Every colour of the rainbow was there, shining upon its scales, thick as warrior shields and dazzling brighter than the sun. The rainbow serpent awoke. The rainbow serpent travelled the smooth sands that covered the surface of our earth and so heavy the serpent was, so vast, so long, so wide that as the serpent travelled, it pushed the sand up, its body forming valleys and winding hills. Wherever so the serpent slept, the sand would creak and groan below it, holding up its mighty weight. And when this rainbow serpent travelled on, a great dry ocean floor sat there in its sleeping place. The rainbow serpent forged the hills and the valleys and the dry ocean floors. The rainbow serpent was the first to awaken. Following the rainbow serpent came all other manner of things. All the other ancestors awoke. But how? Well, that's another story.